Hello, today we're going to learn how to create interactive PDF forms with Acrobat Pro 11 that can be opened and saved by people using the free Acrobat Reader. It's easiest to create the form in a word processor, then using Acrobat Pro 11, convert it to a PDF, and from that point, convert it to a fillable form. Here is the form from a fictitious company. It is a survey form. If you'll notice, it has a mix of questions with checkboxes and radio buttons on the first page, then on the second page. There are two additional questions that do not have any checkboxes or radio buttons here. To begin to convert this PDF to a fillable form, open Tools and then choose Forms. Open it as needed and then choose Create. Acrobat asks how we would like to create the form. We can either start from scratch or template, or the easier way, which we'll be using today, is choose from existing document, which is the current document. Acrobat displays an information dialog box explaining that it detected the form fields. Just click OK to remove that. Now, let's see how Acrobat did on creating the form fields. Notice that Acrobat has detected most of the fields in the form. All of these black squares are now fillable form fields. Acrobat missed the yes-no in question 2. It also missed the questions on page 2 because there's no way for it to determine that those need form fields and are not simply text. We're going to add a new field for question 2 by clicking Add New Field. And then we have to choose the type. For number 2 question, we're going to use the radio button. Here I just choose radio button and then I move the cursor over the first radio button, the yes, and click. It gives me the radio button choices, choice one, and then the generic group name, group one. This radio button is yes, so I'm going to replace the generic choice one with the word yes. I'll change group name to something a bit more meaningful than group one such as on time. One thing that is important about radio buttons, you must have at least two. And that's what Acrobat shows down here with this warning. So now I'm going to click add another radio button and then position that over no. So here I'll change my choice to no and leave the group name as on time. That's all I need for this particular set of radio buttons, so this is good. If we look over in the field list, we'll see there are two radio buttons with the group name on time, and the buttons are labeled yes and no. That makes it very easy to identify the fields that we just added. Now let's take a look at the second page. The two questions there do not have any fields, so we will have to add them. These will be text fields. So again, I choose Add New Field and then select Text. I position the cursor where I want the field to begin. Click. Field name comes up as just the very generic text too. But I'm going to change that to email address to make it a little more descriptive. And I'm also going to make the field a bit longer because some email addresses can be fairly long. So I'll click over on the rightmost side, any of those three handles, and drag it to the right. I'm going to now add the other feedback, text field. So again, I'll click on the Add New Field and choose Text Field. This time I'm going to position it underneath because I'm going to make it pretty long and big where the user can type multiple lines of text if they so choose. So I click here to initially position the text field. And while we have this field name box displayed, I'm going to rename it, call it feedback. Now I'm going to make it bigger. I will click on the bottom right corner's handle and drag it down and to the right to make it larger. 
Right now the field is bigger, but we still need to tell Acrobat to allow multiple lines of text, plus a few other things. All this is done through the properties. To open the properties, I can either double click or right click inside the field and choose properties. We'll go to the options tab and then come down here and check multi-line. And also, we want to limit the number of characters, not words, but characters here. So I'm going to check that and give it a limit of 750 characters. That should be plenty for any feedback comments. That's all we need for now, so I can click Close. Let's do a little testing and see how it looks. So I'm going to preview it by clicking Preview. Here are these two form fields. They look good so far. I can move between them. But there's one thing I need to be aware of. If I uncheck the Highlight Existing Form Fields button, they vanish. There's no way for the user to know that there are actually fields there. So I'm going to turn that Highlight Existing back on. Then let's go back and edit this form by clicking the Edit button. Here, we'll need to modify the properties of this field, and we do that by right-clicking on the field and choosing Properties. Click the Appearance tab, click Border Color, and then select the color you want the border to be. The other choices here for the border color of the line thickness and the line style are fine, so I will just click Close for now. Repeat again, same process for feedback. Right click, choose Properties, then on the Appearance tab, add a border color and click Close. Bonus information, because they're both the same field type of text box, I could have selected both at the same time by holding the Shift key down as I clicked on the second one. That way I could have easily changed the properties for both of them at one time. That could be very helpful if you have multiple fields of the same type where you need to make a change to the properties. Let's check it again. Preview. Deselect the Highlight Existing Fields. Good. Now we can see them, and the user can see them. Now let's go back to the first page and see how it looks. The best way to test is by simply pressing the Tab key. That's what a lot of people will do to move through the form. I should be able to reach each of the questions in order. I'm on number one word processor. That's good. Should jump to number two next. Uh-oh, skip number two, so we have a little fixing to do. Let's check these. This should just jump from professionalism to technical expertise instead of going through one through five here. And that works. It goes to number four. And then, finally, to number two. Okay, so we need to reposition number two question. What happens after this? It should jump to the second page. It does. Good. So with that one exception, the form looks good so far. Let's go back to edit mode and go up to page one. At the right side under the fields area, we'll see that the on time fields are at the very bottom. This matches the, the tab order, so we need to fix those. All I need to do is reposition the on-time fields where they need to go, which would be for professionalism. I click on the on-time and start dragging it up. It needs to be above the professionalism. Once the field is in the correct location, I release the mouse. That's good. That's where it needs to be. I'm going to preview one more time and check the tab order. It worked. Excellent. It's working. So now I'm going to actually save the file. 
If I'm finished working on the form, I can save it as a reader extended PDF that someone using Adobe's Acrobat Reader can open, type information into, and then save their changes. I choose File, Save As, Other, and choose Reader Extended PDF. And then from there, I need to choose the Enable More Tools, including Form Fill In and Save. But unfortunately, right now, that is grayed out. Sometimes that happens. When, when I encounter this, I simply close the form and then reopen it. So I'm going to do that now. I had just saved it, so I will not be losing anything when I close it. File, close, and then I will immediately reopen it. And do a file, save as other, and then choose reader extended PDF. And enable more tools. Acrobat lets me know what these more tools includes. It is including the save form data, a fillable PDF form only. That is what I want. So I'll choose save now. I will save it as feedback again, replacing the original and click save. And that's all there is to it. You now have a form that can be opened, completed, and saved using the free Adobe Acrobat Reader. Just be sure to test it. Open the form in an Acrobat Reader, complete all of the form fields, and then save it. Be sure to use a different file name to preserve the original version.